All right, so in the previous video, I talked about the folding scheme of Sangria. Maybe I should have uh, written the name here, but it's too late now. Um, and it might have been a bit confusing, especially if you haven't read the paper. So hopefully that it's more of an intro to the paper. Um, but the important thing is that we were folding uh, or compressing two of these things together into one by doing a random linear combination. And there was a prover side and a verifier side and, and so on. Um, I also mentioned in the intro video that Sangria by itself is just a following scheme and doesn't really get you to recursion yet. Uh, the recursion part I explain in the protocol called Nova, and that's what I'm going to explain now. So in Nova, um, let's say as long as you have a following scheme, you're good. What happens is, um, what happens in Nova is that you have, and I'm not going to use the letters and whatever they use there because I actually I, I read the paper a while ago, so I, I don't remember exactly. But they say that. Um, you have to implement a circuit. Your, your circuit is basically going to implement that. Um, they call it F prime, if I remember correctly. And within F prime, there's your function F, which is the, the state transition that you want to do every time. So, so Nova does recursion, right? So recursion or, or, or IVC. So at every step of the recursion, you're doing the same computation again and again and again. So F takes uh, the previous states and some uh, some uh, local data, they call it log, and creates a new state. So that, that's all what, what F does, right? Um, and, and that's only part of your circuit. That's the part, that's the application logic of your circuit, let's say, uh, that transition you from a previous state to, to a new state using some local data. Okay, the main circuit is going to contain that plus something else, uh, plus a, a folding verifier. Actually, let me rename this. We're going to call that app, and this is going to be my, my circuit. The folding verifier is going to do the, the folding thing we just talked about. It's going to take um, like some, some instance witness, two instance witness, and actually these are um, the public parts, not, not the prover parts, because the prover did the work for us. And it's only also going to take a proof of folding. So the, if you remember correctly in, in, the, in the previous video on Sangria, uh, I said that there's this this uh, error slack that's um, that's created from a T that's that's provided by the prover. So um, the, the proof here of the folding contains this uh, this this T commitment or the, the T commitment here of the the vector of the prover uh, that we need to to verify the, that the folding was done correctly because we need to compute the new the new error uh, which is the the only thing in the protocol that's not computed by simply doing a random linear combination. Uh, anyway, the folding verifier will create a folding instance, a folded instance, which, uh, which, as I said, is a linear combination of the two previous one. And if you verify this one, and it's true, uh, you know that you verify the two previous one. And the two previous one could have been also folded instances, so you might be verifying a a tree of, or, or like a, you know, a, a lot of other witnesses and, uh, and uh, execution of circuits. So, so that's your circuit. The thing that you should notice here, really the, if, if you think of, of the following scheme as like the first trick of Nova, um, this, is, this is the second trick. You have to see this circuit, right? This circuit also has its own um, witness, instance witness uh, pair. And so you can sort of recursively call yourself. Maybe I should use a different color here. Uh, let me use some green. Hopefully we can read that. Here I have a, the same circuit here. Okay, maybe I should have used the same color. Let me go back. 
colors are important, you know. The same circuit here. Um, with the same folding verifier and the same app stuff, we'll take one instance and another one instance, and it will create, uh, you know, let's call it D, I don't know, a new instance. And this is basically how, and, and of course, like, a, a new two, I guess. And we took this also, and we got some local data, like two, I guess. Um, because the new state here is actually the, the previous state uh, from this application perspective, and we produce a new state, right? So this is IVC. We keep iterating uh, on some, some logic, and we keep doing some state transition um, regarding some local data, like, you know, transactions, for example, if we're thinking of a blockchain. So that's the trick. Maybe, maybe it doesn't make sense. I hope it makes sense. But your circuit itself, which folds two instances into one, is also an instance. And so you can take that instance and what you created and fold these two things again into one here. And so at the very, very end, um, when you actually want to prove something, what you'll prove, what you'll get is two instance, um, two instance witness, and you just have to prove this uh, two instance witness in in uh, in Plonk. And so I think Nova has an optimization where they they fold again, if I remember correctly. But you could also create two different proofs, one for this one and one for this one. Uh, and as long as you verify the two, then then you verify the the whole tree proof uh, recursion that happened. I haven't really talked about a number of things um, that I'm not going to talk about. For example, I haven't said what are the public inputs of these circuits. It's sort of like an exercise for you. Um, you know, the 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 data here, the lo local data could be a private input. The new stuff here needs to be uh, passed in a public input so that the next one can use it. Um, th there's there's a bunch of wiring to do. Since it needs to to fit, they sometimes just hash to something and and recover it. I'm not going to talk about that now. Actually, I will talk about that later as well, because even post proof recursion or you know the normal proof composition also uses this uh, this technique. And there is also the fact that we're doing um, usually we're we're acting in a field um, and the commitments are in a different field. And so uh, you, you sort of have to use two different curves. Uh, so, so if you already know that, don't worry, I'll talk about that in the future. If you don't know that, just forget what I'm saying. Uh, but, but there's a number of things to consider and these things will consider them in the normal proof composition schemes that I'll talk about later as well. So I don't need to talk about it here. Um, but yeah, Really, the recap here is that you need a folding scheme such that a prover can can fold to to instance uh, witness pairs, and a verifier can verify and do that on their own as well. And then you you build things this way uh, with a circuit that has your application logic and a folding verifier inside of it, and and this is how you end up. Uh, this is what you end up folding. Uh, so. Yeah, hopefully that's sort of clear. Uh, I know these are complicated things to think about, but if you think more about it, if you read the paper, uh, you, you can you can uh, you can try to understand these concepts. Uh, I'm gonna stop here for all the pre-proof uh, pre-proof recursion. I believe there's a paper called Super Supernova that. Uh, talks about generalizing this this uh, this thing. I'm not sure how it works. I haven't read it, but that, that might be of interest. But now I'm going to spend more time on the normal proof composition and recursion part um, uh, and talk about IVC, PCD. So I'll, I'll see you at the next video. Um, 
And yeah, we'll talk about that.